look how good this looks. I put lights out here. I brought all my stuff out here. We're gonna have a good old time. I'm just gonna kind of vibe for a little bit while I build this turbine. I got all my stuff. We got a store brand sparkling water. Go ahead and crack your favorite cold boy if you're building the windmill along with me. All right, it's kind of funny to be sharing my hobby and the thing that I enjoy so much and have all of these people that I don't know from the internet come and be like, hey, this thing is awesome. It's like, it's like reassuring to me. Yeah, thank you, it is awesome. <laughs> so anyway, today I'm gonna be building the windmill. I'll just leaving the camera on and I'll just be talking a little bit and I'll cut out the boring parts for you. But I wanted to talk a little bit about how I actually designed the turbines because that's what we're going to be assembling today. Here, I've got all of the hardboard veins that I cut the other day. Now, I cut each one of these individually and with a jigsaw, so they're not perfect. You know, and if you just hold them like this, you can tell that there's quite a bit of variation between them. And so there's gonna be quite a bit of weight variation between the blades. And I've had it happen to me before such that a couple of the heavier blades got on one side and the whole turbine was off balance. At this scale, your turbines don't have to be wonderfully balanced but balance should at least be a consideration. So what I'm gonna be doing to make sure that my blades are fairly well balanced is I'm just gonna grab this kitchen scale. Uh, if you cook a lot or sell drugs, you probably have one of these lying around. And I'm going to weigh each one of the blades. I'm gonna calculate the average weight out of the six of them. And then I'm gonna put them into two piles, one being lighter and one being heavier than average. And then after that, when you're putting them into the turbine, I'll show you me doing that later as well. When you're putting them into the turbine, just make sure you alternate lighter, lighter than average, heavier than average, lighter than average. Um, and then ideally, if you have two that are greatly varied in weights, put those ones at opposite ends of each other. So I'll go ahead and weigh and mark the weights on them real quick. And by the power of editing, it will be done in an instant. I got really lucky. So I weighed all of these out and they are all different weights, but they are only different by one gram each. So I got really lucky. These were heavier than I thought. I knew that they were gonna be heavier, but the plywood sheets were looking at like 70 grams per blade. And these are the same size blades. And these are like 200. So quite a difference. Although I, I am confident that with the increased pitch that these will still be able to handle this new one-to-one -one gear ratio, which I remind you is half the gearing of Windmill 21. So Windmill 21 had a two to one gear ratio, meaning the windmill spun twice to spin the generator once and this one has one to one. So hopefully with the new pitch, even with the heavier blades, it will still be able to handle it. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this beautiful little piece of uh, printed plastic. This is the new hub. I think it looks gorgeous. I don't know how I did it this time around, but it came out looking really good, I think. If you are even remotely interested in how I make these, please let me know in the comments because I use more or less the same process in terms of CAD every time for designing them. I just kind of tweak little minor things in between. Something that I've learned along the way, I used to measure these out, I used to print a little guide for where the holes would need to be, and then I'd drill the holes and then I'd mount them all at once. I don't do that anymore because I found that it, you don't always line them up perfectly, and I found that it's easier to just put them into the hub first, make sure it's more or less even, and if you have these little side rails cut out, these little corner pieces cut out, it makes it easier for to find the center, as well as it prevents them from, from colliding with each other when you're putting it together. But if you have those cut out, you know, I, I just stick them in the turbine and then I just drill straight through the holes. That way there's nothing of a guessing game. Additionally, because sometimes you drill through the wood and you'll splinter it as you go through and so it will become thicker near the holes and then it sometimes it becomes a hassle to, to jam it into the hub. So I've just, I've just been putting them in, drilling the holes while they're in one by one and then fixing the screws in place. One other thing that I've updated about this hub, I said in one of my previous videos that I was going to be using knurled nuts from now on because I thought that it was easier to put together. That is no longer my opinion. In fact, I am very strongly back in favor of using regular old nuts. And here's the reason. The knurled nuts to mount them, I was using a soldering iron and that method works fine for other projects, not this one. One of the main reasons being because these turbine mount holes for the hub, they're not flush with the hub, they are angled. And so getting that angle just right, I mean, you have to push them in at an angle with the soldering iron. And that can be quite difficult to do because if you're off by only a little bit, you, the screw will have trouble getting into the hole. So on one of these turbine assemblies for Windmill 21, I had to scrap the whole thing because I stripped so many screws by not having them aligned with the knurled nut on the other side of the fork. Another reason I ended up giving up on the knurled nuts is because it is nice to not have to deal with 12 M3 nuts, but 
the thing about neural nuts that I kind of learned is if you are cranking them to any significant tension or torque, I don't know what the right word would be there, they come out of their place. You know, when you mount them with a soldering iron, they kind of stick to the plastic that's around them and they kind of bond to it, right, from the heat. But if you start torquing them down too much, that bond will just come undone because you're putting so much force on it while it's in its socket. So there could be ways to avoid that, but I'm just not going to bother. I'm just gonna go back to nuts, which I can tension down as much as I want and I don't have to worry about. So jumping right into it here, here goes the first blade on this sleek new turbine for Windmill 21. So I picked my first blade up off of the heavy pile. I marked the weights somewhere where I knew I wouldn't see them again. And then you just slip this in there, make sure that it's more or less centered, and then drill your hole. Couldn't be simpler. Now, I'm gonna be working with a lot of different things in my hands here, and I don't wanna to have to worry about the camera and how much space I'm taking while I record. So I'm just going to do another one of those things where through the magic of editing, fast, or in an instant, or right now, or something, I can't remember what, I can't remember what I ended the last one with. Are you ready to see it? Dude, I'm so excited, it looks so cool. Ba -ba -da -ba. How dope is that? Oh, it looks awesome, man. Here's what the back of it looks like. You can see those nuts and bolts sticking out of it there. The print quality wasn't amazing on this, but I'll take it. Okay, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure all of the nuts and bolts are tight, and then we're gonna stick a shaft on this thing and see how well it does. And I've got the vane, the wind vane already done. You guys saw that in the last video, if you're watching these. These are like windmill vlogs at this point. It's kind of fun. Wait, I gotta pose for a thumbnail because I never do that. Okay, that'll be good. Um, another thing, if you're thinking about making one of these, I would strongly caution you against making a propeller with an odd number of blades unless it's three. And the reason is because it is very difficult to put together, especially if it's something fairly large. You know, you kind of you kind of under anticipate how much you have to position this thing while you're working on it. Because I mean, I found myself like hugging this thing like it's my emotional support windmill for like half the time that I was putting it together because it's so big. And, and when you're putting these blades in, you want to make sure that the edge of the blade is flush with the edge of the hub so that it's firmly in place. And so I found myself, you know, if, if it was just these two blades in, I found myself like trying to get leverage to make sure that was the case while drilling it. And that was very, very difficult. And two blades, well, let me just say this about two blades. I've got a really interesting two blade windmill build video that's gonna be coming up soon. It's ridiculous. Not every two blade windmill is ridiculous, but watch out for this one, cause it's, it's dumb. And I think I'm gonna start doing a little bit more of that. Making windmills that I know aren't going to work very well, but that are entertaining. Because here's the thing, and this might upset some of the people that watch this channel, but here's, here's my strong opinion on windmills, okay? Windmills are a work of art. And the reason that I say that is because on any basis, cost, efficiency, anything, they are worse than solar panels. And so if the whole thing is that we want a push towards renewable energy, obviously we want to choose the source of renewable energy that is the most cost effective and reasonable. There is no reason that we should choose windmills over solar panels, and yet we do. Why? Because humans like looking at things that move. It's why I stared at a lava lamp for over an hour today. And that is not an exaggeration. I kind of wish that it was. I just sat there looking at it. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I shouldn't be assuming this about everybody. But I really do think that humans kind of enjoy watching anything in motion. And especially I think a windmill is, is much more inspiring to look at. You look at it and you say, wow, we are really making the push to renewable energy. Look at that thing go, making electricity for us. Versus a solar panel that just sits there and it's kind of hard to anthropomorphize into something more than what it is because you just kind of look at it, it's just, yeah, okay, it's making making electricity. But a windmill, you, you look at it and you say, wow, it's so grand, look how big it is. And the same is true for small scale. If you just wanted to make enough power to put on your house, solar panels would be a better option. So for every reason, a windmill is worse. So why do I still choose to make them? I think 
that for the reasons that I said a second ago, that they're inspiring. I think they're fun to watch. I think they're very cool. I think they're easier to relate to, even though they are a worse option than solar panels. And I accept that. I know that that's true. I still like windmills and I still think they're cool. And that's why I said that they're art, because even though in almost every circumstance and situation, they are a worse option than solar panels, but I still choose to make them for my projects because I think they're fun and I like them. And they make me happy when I make windmills and when I make a new design and when I find something that works, I enjoy that. So me choosing to make windmills, even though they're a worse option, I think that that is an artistic expression in and of itself, let alone all of the aesthetics and the design choices and all of this and that that go into building a windmill. That's just how love works in general. In the context of people, when you're in love with a person, most of the time, if you are seeking the very best person, the person that checks every single one of your boxes, the person that can provide the most tangible benefit to your life, I would wager to say that you're not gonna be happy with that person. Love is we have chosen to love this thing and that love is going to cause us to look past its imperfections. Why? Well, you don't need a reason. That's what love is. The reason is because you love it. I don't care if it's dorky to say that I love windmills because I look past their imperfections, right? I look past the fact that they have more moving parts and they cost more to maintain and they produce less electricity on a, on a dollar cost average basis. I look past all that. Why? Because I have chosen windmills and I love them, okay? It's the same thing with people. Okay, romantic windmill life lesson, I don't know what that was, rant over. Somehow I accidentally changed myself to the iPhone cinematic mode while I'm recording. I was wondering why all of a sudden I looked gorgeous, even more so than before. This is great. I'll, I should record in this mode more often. It's wonderful. Actually, I'm going to take it off this mode for a little bit because you can't see the windmill in the background, and that's the most important part. Yeah, okay. I look worse. We'll, st we'll take it. Here's what we're going to do. Windmill surgery. Here's the old turbine. Um, God rest his soul. Or her soul. And I'm just going to steal the whole, uh, this is a nut washer bearing washer and then a gear that also acts as a nut assembly. I'm going to steal just the whole thing off of it because this turbine's going to be useless to me now. Boy, this is something that's really sad for no reason. Like I all of a sudden feel lacrimose while taking apart my old wind turbine. That's how you, if you didn't already think that I romanticize windmills too much from that whole rant just now, now it's, you definitely know how much I like windmills. Boy, it is ridiculous how much heavier this thing is. So you'll notice the little, <laughs> so you'll notice the little hexagon shaped thing in there. That's a countersink. <laughs> this freaking thing is so heavy. I'm not struggling to lift it up. I'm just struggling to handle it. So the nut goes in there, or the bolt, sorry. And the reason that that's nice is because then you can be sure that the head of the bolt spins with the turbine with no slack whatsoever. Okay, unfortunately we have a problem, and that is that the wind vane, this is a problem with the last one too, but I just forgot that I fixed it on the last one. When you tighten it down, the wind vane collides with the nut of the electronics case. So we're not gonna get any good tests tonight, but that's fine, because the wind's not really blowing anyway, so we wouldn't have gotten much. But I will correct that very soon, uh, and I guess this video will be more of a build slash rant about love <laughs> and then a speed test will come on a windier day. But so here is the vein as attached as it can be with the problem that it has. And here we go. Man, this thing is really heavy. Oh my gosh. Oh man, dude. I am just taking L's today. Look at that. So both of those things are riding up against the wind vane. So I'll tell you what, this video is going to have to be more of a build slash instruction slash rant about love and windmills video. And if you want to see the tests, some power output figures and some high speed runs, you will have to just subscribe and wait for the next video. But this one's definitely gonna be a long one. So if you've made it here, to the end, sincere thanks, as always, because you are really the one that is allowing me to continue to do this type of content, which I love so much, and I hope that you are also enjoying. And while we're talking about things that I hope, I hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks again.